Hello and welcome to a lesson that will address the key differences between SSL and TLS. This video is intended to provide a high-level overview for those of you studying for the CISSP exam or for those of you in the general public who might just want to know for your own benefit. So without further ado, let's dig into it. SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer and TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. Typically, when referring to SSL, the industry is talking about something called SSL 3.0. SSL is an example of what ISC Squared used to call hybrid cryptography, which basically means it's a method of using both asymmetric and symmetric cryptography to send secure communications. SSL and TLS are both represented by the padlock icon in your browser when you visit a website. TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are the sequels to SSL. They are basically the same protocol as SSL, but are considered vulnerable. TLS 1.2 and 1.3 are the most recent versions and considered secure. So what are the differences between SSL and TLS? To do that, let's first quickly talk about the similarities. SSL and TLS basically follow the same process. There are some subtle differences, but unless you're working in this field, you probably don't need to know their finer details. For information purposes, there is a client and server handshake process, followed by a key exchange, followed by the encryption of data sent between client and server. If you'd like a little more information on how that process works, we have a separate video that covers asymmetric encryption, so I recommend watching that where we explain with visuals how the process works. Both protocols can use an algorithm called RSA, or Rivest Shamir Adelman for key exchange. And the terms SSL and TLS certificate mean the same thing. In other words, if you say to someone that you have a TLS certificate or an SSL certificate, it basically means the same thing. These terms are often used interchangeably in the industry. So now let's look at some differences. One of the main differences can be the use of hashing functions. SSL can use older hashing functions such as MD5 or SHA-1, which have been shown to be deprecated due to the ability to produce something called a collision. A collision is when the digest or digital representation is shown to be the same when there are different inputs. If you'd like more information on hashing functions, we have a few videos on hashing, digital signatures, or digital certificates that covers this information with some nice visuals too. Ideally, hashing functions should never produce the same output given any change to the input. TLS uses SHA-256, which is called collision resistance. In other words, you can have an infinite number of inputs that will never produce the same output, at least with today's modern computing power. There are also some differences in the algorithms used for key exchange. We previously mentioned that both SSL and TLS can use RSA. SSL can also use KEA or key exchange algorithm, which is based on Diffie-Hellman. TLS uses Diffie-Hellman or DH variations, which are asymmetric algorithms, or PSK, which stands for pre-shared key protocol. Once the handshake process is complete and a symmetric key is agreed on, SSL uses the data encryption standard or DES and the RC4 cipher. TLS uses the much stronger AES or advanced encryption standard. SSL uses something called a message authentication code whereas TLS uses a hashed message authentication code. The difference between these two functions and how they're used in SSL versus TLS gets pretty far down into the weeds, so I won't be covering it in this video. The thing to know here is that HMAC is more secure because it uses a secret key in the hashing function that it performs. So what's the bottom line in this lesson? Well, I would say that SSL and TLS are essentially the same thing in a general sense. TLS is the more updated and secure version of SSL. SSL and TLS certificates refer to the same thing. The protocols operate mostly in the same fashion. One thing to keep in mind is that when talking about SSL on your jobs, be sure to ask what version people are using. For example, if you're maintaining a web application and your internal folks are saying, we use SSL, at that point it's important to distinguish whether it's SSL 3.0 or TLS 1.2, because if you're running a public-facing web application, it's essential that you have the more secure version, which is TLS 1.2 and not SSL 3.0. That's it for this lesson. I hope you learned something. Please take a minute to subscribe to our channel and head over to cissprep.net if you're planning to take the CISSP exam. We have a test bank with more than 1,500 realistic questions that are similar in style to the real exam. Thanks for watching and have a great day.